God truly has moved, and I believe every single prayer that went forward today has been answered. Amen. I believe that. I believe that. And so I'm not even going to, I'm not even going into a, an in-depth uh, discussion about what I had planned for today because you will see once you look up here, you'll notice that it was already covered. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's God. That's what He does. Though. So y'all made it easy for me today because y'all preached half the message. <laughs> All right. So thank you in advance for that. So uh, what I want to do is I want to read this scripture here, Romans 12, 1 and 2. Amen. And we're going to, I'm just going to talk about this for a little bit and then we're going to more worship out there because God is just amazing. So I'll give you a moment to get there, Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. It says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. Did anybody do that today? Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We all know that part of the scripture, but I like the second part is where it says, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. What God's will is. Knowing what God's will. I think one of the biggest struggles that we may have as individuals, as Christ follows this, what is my will? What is his will for my life? Yeah. And so I want to talk to you just briefly about preparing for the promise. Preparing for the promise. We have to learn how to prepare for the promise. I remember when I was younger and, and, and I wanted to play professional basketball. Y'all know my story. I wanted to play in the NBA. And um, so I did just enough to be better than everybody else. God showed me in a dream. He gave me a dream showing me that I'm going to be playing in the NBA. And so I took the dream and I sat it on the shelf. And instead of focusing on making sure I prepared for that, I only prepared well enough to be better than everybody else. See, y'all got to get this in your spirit here. So I didn't prepare for excellence. I prepared to be good. I prepared to be better than the other person. That's not enough. And so when the opportunity came, I had the opportunity in front of me with the magic, with the nuggets, all these different teams. Okay, let's see what you got. I gave them what I had, but it was not enough. Because I only prepared to be better than my other adversaries, but not to be good enough to meet what God has already shown me. Y'all with me today? Right. So I did not prepare for the promise. And then I got a little upset. Well, God, if, it's, if you showed me this, but I didn't get it, then what happened? So then I started to play these mental games with myself. Well, maybe it was not his will. Y'all see that? Y'all get quiet on me. Y'all get quiet on me. Because we all like to say, well, if it is his will, come on, somebody, it'll happen. And so I believe that we sometimes fall back on if it is his will that keeps us from striving and preparing on our own. Mm -hmm. If he says yes, then it's mine. But there's a little piece of that in the word that says faith without works is dead. Right. Right. And so we have to learn that when God gives us and shows us a promise, we can't just sit on the promise. I know it's, it's a saying resting on the promise, but... You can rest, but you still got to prepare. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that I want to tell you about, because God has made some promises in your life. He's made some promises in my life. But if we don't prepare to receive the promise, yeah, yeah, we're going to yeah. miss it. Man. Oh, y'all got to get it. Man, man. Some people believe, no, not my God. He wouldn't let me miss my promise. Mm -hmm. You let yourself it's yeah. the promise. Yeah. He showed you what he's already. And one thing I love about the Lord is that when he shows you your promise, that means it's already complete. Mm -hmm. It's already done. You just need to take the proper steps so you can walk into it. Mm -hmm. So it's not him being schizophrenic. Oh, yeah, I'm going to give it to you. There, dangle the carrot and I'm going to pull it. He didn't do that. You didn't prepare. Mm -hmm. So when he shows you, and sometimes I'll tell you how God does this. 
He'll speak to you through a song. He'll speak to you through a prophet. He'll speak to you through your best friend. He'll speak to you through your pastor. He'll speak to you through your haters. Yeah, yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, he'll speak to you through that. Now, how many of y'all want to be told something about yourself from your haters? <laughs> <laughs> I know I don't, because especially if I know that you got something against me and then you tell me about myself, I, I'm probably not willing to receive that because of who you are. Can I just be real for a moment? But sometimes God will send your hater to tell you about yourself just to see where your pride is at. Yeah, uh. yeah, yeah. Uh. So I've learned to not so much look at the package, but look at the message within it. Because, see, what happens is God will send a messenger ahead of the blessing. Say that again, because I don't think only two of y'all got that. God will send a messenger ahead of the blessing. See, because the blessing is complete. The blessing is prepared. So I need you to get this thing in order before you walk into it because when he sets it up, he also puts a date on it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, There's yeah. a date on your blessing that you're going to walk into it on this day. Man. But before that day arrives, I need you to work on some of these issues that you got. Yeah. So I'm right. going to send a messenger yeah. to give you a word, and it's up to you to receive it so that when that day arrives, you're ready to receive Man. it. Man. 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 Yeah. 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 Somebody may tell you. Get your, get your finances in order. <laughs> Learn how to save your money. But if you don't prepare, then opportunity comes. You don't have the money to purchase what it is you want to get. Right, right, well, right. well, if it was God's will. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Right. Well, if it was God's will, I would have had it. No, no, no. You didn't listen to the messenger. Therefore, when the blessing came, you missed it. <laughs> Y'all will be mad at me today. That's all right. I'm mad at you. Come on, somebody. That person said, get your credit in order. Can I just get, can I hit you, can I hit you a little bit? Get your credit in order. Because that's, I'm, I'm talking to myself for a moment. Get your credit together. But you don't make the proper steps to get your credit in order. Now you see this house you want. You see this car that you want. You see this building that you want. And they're saying, uh-uh, your score ain't high enough. Well, if it was God's will. Hmm. So now it puts me in a place where I don't have to do anything. I just got to trust that if it's a yes, it was God. If it's a no, then it was me. <laughs> Preach. Come on, somebody. And so we learn to live our whole life based on that concept. If it's yes, it's God. If it's no, it's me. And now we've gotten to this place where we can't even discern the voice of God anymore. Because we've gotten so far away from him, we don't even know how to prepare anymore. How to re pre prepare for the promise. Because if, if I get it, then it was him. I mean, I don't have to do nothing. Just wait and see if it falls in my lap. But if it don't fall in my lap, if it falls in somebody else, well, maybe that was their blessing. Mine is coming. No, yours just left in somebody else's hands. Y'all don't be mad at me today. Y'all don't be mad at me today. Hallelujah. So if we don't learn how to how do you prepare for the blessing? You hear it. You receive it. You pray for it. And when you finish praying for it, you get up and you prepare for it. You got to put the work into it. All right, Lord, you gave me this promise. And I know you cannot lie. So that means this is already done. So let me do my part. Yeah. Let me get myself in order so that way when that day arrives, I don't know when it is, when that day arrives, I'm ready. I'm ready. Prepare for the blessing. Because I'm showing you my promise to you, my son, my daughter. I'm showing you what I want for you. I'm showing you what my will for your life is. I'm just showing you what I want. But now I need you to show me how bad you want it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So sometimes we end up missing it because we're not willing to personally develop. We're not willing to spiritually develop. We're not willing to do any type of professional development. We're not willing to do whatever it takes so that we don't miss it. I'm just going to trust that God is just going to give it to me. My kids are like that. Amen. So it, it happens. My children are like that. You know, Dad, I, did I clean my room? No, I didn't clean my room, but can you buy me this? <laughs> I'm speaking I'm to the parents right now. I'm speaking to all the parents right now. It's, it's, it's a universal issue. Did you, did you do your chores? No. 
we in the store, can you get me this? What? No. Don't get your behind on it. You didn't even clean your room. You didn't even do the dishes. You didn't take out the trash. You didn't do none of these things, but yet you expect me to just give, huh? At any age. At any age. <laughs> <laughs> At any age. Just give. Yeah, yeah. But the same concept applies in the kingdom. If yeah. you didn't prepare for it, don't expect to receive it. It doesn't mean the blessing wasn't there. Now, just like we talked about shackles have purpose, your blessing has purpose. So either you're going to get it and use it, or somebody else is going to get it and use it. But somebody, God don't create blessings just to sit idle. Somebody's going to get that blessing, but he has your name on it. Your name can be changed, though, if you don't prepare it. And he'll put somebody else in your place. Amen? Amen. So one of the things about God is that, you know, he gives us blessings on credit. You haven't done anything to earn it. You haven't done anything to show worthiness of it. He's just that good to you that I'm just going to believe you to walk into it. I'm just going to believe you to, to, to have a, a transformation of the mind so that you can receive this blessing that I have for you. But you got to do it in order to receive it. So he's trusting you because he's put something in you to make you capable. So he puts that in you and he's giving it to you before you have proven that you're ready for it. How many times have we defaulted on that loan, though? I can raise one hand, but each hand counts for five times. <laughs> Amen. I've defaulted on the loan many times where he has extended his grace to me and said, this is your blessing. This is yours, Freddie. And I'm looking at it and I'm recognizing I see it, but I didn't prepare for it. So it ended up going into somebody else's hands. That contract that had my name on it, somebody else signed on it. That car that I should have got, I didn't prepare for it. Somebody else got that car. That house that I should have gotten, somebody else got that house. There was just so many things that I defaulted on, except one. I was prepared for her. <laughs> Amen. I prepared for that one by whatever. Amen. And that brings me to my next point. Sometimes you may not know exactly what the will of God is, but when you see it, yeah. you know it. Right. When it's falling, when it's right in your face, oh, that's it. Right there. See, I, I know that he's got something for me, and so I'm just going to prepare and be ready and all. And just in case, whenever he blesses me, I'm prepared. But then when I see it, I know it. Think about it for a minute. Ladies, I'm talking to ladies for a minute. When you go shopping. Come on. Come on. Y'all don't shop? Oh, Lord. What's up, bro? That's your... Oh, yeah. Where we go shopping? When you go shopping, you got that one person that come in, ma'am, may I help you with something? No, I'm fine. I'm just looking. I'm just looking. Was well, there anything in particular that you're looking for? No, not really. But when I see it, I'll know it. Come on, somebody. I'll know it when I see it. So right now, I'm just kind of just browsing through the blouses. You know, y'all know what you're doing, looking at the shoes. I don't know exactly what I'm looking for, but I'm expecting something. But when I see it, I'll know it. That's how we're supposed to see God's blessing. I'm not exactly sure what it's going to look like, but I know it's coming. So I'm going to prepare. I'm going to be on the lookout. My discerning eyes is all over the place. I'm looking for my blessing. But when I see it, I'm going to know it. When I see it, I'm going to know it. So we got to get to that place where every day when I wake up, I'm looking for my blessing. I wake up, I'm praying. I'm, I'm, I'm repenting. If there's anything, Lord, that I have done that could delay my blessing, forgive me right now. In the name of Jesus. Because I don't need to delay it any longer. See, I've delayed myself because I didn't want to prepare. Yeah. But now I'm in a place of preparation, but I'm still human. So, Lord, show me my ways. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. Show me my ways so that way I don't delay this blessing any longer. So when he gives you the promise, there's a couple of scriptures I want you to attach to your promise. This is one of Deuteronomy 31. It says, the Lord himself goes before you. He goes when? Before you. So he didn't already went ahead of you. He didn't already set it up for you. And you, I'm sorry, and will be with you. So not only has he gone ahead of you, he's still going with you. Right, right, right. He will never leave you nor forsake you. So do not be afraid and do not be discouraged. 
We serve a God that has already gone ahead before you even knew what you wanted, and he laid the blessing out for you. He already did it before you, and then when it finally hit your spirit, this is what it is, he's walking with you like, come on, let's go get it. Let's go get it. Because you prayed for it. You fasted for it. You cried for it. How many people have lost sleep crying over something they didn't want God to do in their life? I know I have. I lost plenty of sleep. Lord, I need you to move in this area of my life because I'm struggling with this thing. I need you to move in my finances, move in my marriage, move in my family, move in this ministry. I need you to move, God. Yeah. So when he finally moved and he showed me a blessing, I recognized it. Yeah. I saw it. So there's no question as if this is for me. There's no more question because this is mine. Look at somebody tell them, this is mine. This is mine. This is mine. I know my blessing when I see it because I cry for it, I pray for it, I fast it over it. Ain't no if it is. No, no, no. This is mine. And I will not be discouraged because, see, what looks like a blessing to you, your friends might not see it as a blessing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can't get caught in what your friends say. I don't know if that's your lane or not. I don't know if that's I done prayed for this. So you stay in your lane. How about that? Amen. Don't be telling me about my lane. You ain't been praying for me. How, how many times you been praying for me? How many nights did you up with me on the phone crying and showing me scriptures to encourage me about what it is I'm trying? You have it. So don't come here and tell me what my lane is. Do not be discouraged. The other scripture. I might just sit down on this one. I might just sit down on this one. He says, for I know the plans I have for you. Declares the Lord. He's declaring it. The Lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. He knows your plans because he created them. But now we're in fellowship because we're one with Christ. So not only does he know the plans, but now I know his plans too. Right. My plans are to prosper you. Not for you to be in lack. My plans are to prosper you. So that job that you want, come on somebody. That's his perfect will. See, that's why I want to go back to the other scripture. His perfect will is whatever it is that he says yes. This is not only going to draw you closer to me, but this is also going to release your family from the bondage that's over them. So the perfect will, the plan is to prosper you, not to harm you. The harm you is the, is the uh, permissive will. We're going to get into that in a minute. That second job, because you weren't prepared for the primary job. Come on, somebody. So now you got to take the other job you really didn't want to take. You just take it now because you got to provide for the family, because you got to put food on the table. The job that you got to work longer hours, you probably make less money. The secondary job. And you're saying, but if it was God's will, I would have had the other job, right? Yeah. Because that's what we train ourselves to believe. But in reality, we prepare. So he says, my plans are not to harm you. And harming you is giving you a job that you don't want. Plans to give you hope and a future. So this sounds to me like his perfect will for my life. But if I go back on that second part of this scripture, I told you that, that we don't really look at. It says, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. What is it? His good, pleasing, and what? Perfect. If we can get ourselves in tune with God, we can live out a perfect will life. Does that sound too difficult to y'all? Does that sound too hard for y'all? Just getting in tune with what God's will is. What is it? Let me pray and find out. Because he said he'll give us the desires of our heart. Is that true or not? I don't know. Right. Okay, I know I heard that somewhere. He said he will give us the desires of our heart. So when he gives me the desires of my heart, my thing is what I need to do, I need to go ahead and pray about that. Lord, this is you, right? What does this look like? What is the, what is the end result? Where do you want me to go from here? Starting from point A to point C, what steps do you want me to take? Yeah. And when he gives you the first step, get up and do it. First thing you need to do is you need to cut such and such off. Okay, boom, done. Cut them off. We preached last week about separation is necessary. Because when God wants to bless you, if you've got people tied to you that ain't supposed to be in your next season, he's not going to give it to you until they are out the picture. So either you get rid of them or he's going to get rid of them. One or two, but your next season is held up until that separation takes place. So Lord, what am I going to do first? And do that first. What do I do second? I'm talking about get this stuff in order. Don't get up from praying and go make your peanut butter jelly sandwich. Don't get up from praying and go off and say, well, let me go watch this football game. I done did my little prayer for the day. I done did my 10 minutes. Let me, no, no, no. Find out why you're in prayer. What is my next step? Because I need to prepare. You show me something that I want. I want that. So how do I get there? How do I prepare for that? How about to get that? Man, sure. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. The journey. The journey. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. 
So we gotta prepare. We gotta prepare. We gotta prepare. What this 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 next scripture I like right here. Matthew 7, 7, in the, in the New Living Version. I like this version on this scripture better than all the other versions. It says, keep on asking, and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be opened unto you. Keep on. Persistent. And sometimes we say something that we want. We go to God and pray about this thing. We pray about it one time, and then we don't pray no more about it. Why? Either we don't believe that he's going to deliver, or you were trained that you ain't got to keep praying about the same thing. Anybody ever heard somebody say that before? Mm -hmm. You ain't got to keep praying about the same thing over and over again. He heard it the first time. Keep on. The Bible says keep on asking. It says keep on seeking. Keep on knocking. And the door will be open to you. I go with this more than tradition any day. Right. You can tell me to pray about something once and believe God to do it, but this says keep on. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to nag him every single day until he gives me what I'm praying for. Right. He's alright with it. Because he said it in his word. He said do it. That's his word. He's fine with it. Don't be discouraged because you don't see it early on, though. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Don't be discouraged because see, because see, this is the thing. You think about Joseph, and not you, Joseph. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. We're talking about that. <laughs> so we're gonna talk about Joseph for a minute because see, God yeah. showed Joseph mm -hmm. that he was a king, right? Mm -hmm. But then threw him in prison. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sometimes, come on. Sometimes God will show you that you're a king. Yeah. And put you in prison just to see if you gotta have a castle in order to act like one. Mm -hmm. Amen. I need to see where your heart is at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I, I'm gonna anoint you as a king, but I'm gonna throw you in prison. Can you act like a king when you're in your prison season? Can you be a king anyway? Or do I have to roll out the red carpet and have the trumpets laid out before you start walking in your car? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a question. Just a question. Hallelujah. I want everybody in here to know that God has something for you. Everybody. There is a blessing waiting for you. But are you preparing for it? See, in this season, we I, I want to believe that we all recognize that there is something coming. Yes. Come on, somebody. There is something in the atmosphere. There is an expectancy in the atmosphere that God is about to just blow our minds with something. Are you prepared for it? Are you ready for it? Come on, somebody. Are you ready for it? Woo! Come on. Are you ready for it? So when it shows up at your doorstep, are you going to recognize it? The same way Jacob recognized Esau when he was about a mile apart, he was coming back home, he saw him, and he took off running to him. Because he recognized his brother from a mile away. Can you recognize your blessing from a mile away? Oh, I saw you coming a mile away. I'm so glad I'm running to it. Or does it have to knock on the door and knock again? And you look through the curtains. I don't know who that is. And you want to answer the door, and you have missed your blessing, and it came, and you didn't recognize it. Yeah. God is ready to do something miraculous in all of our lives, and we got to make sure that we're prepared for it. Because, see, that's the whole point. So he, he gives you the vision. you got to prepare for it. And your preparation is what unlocks the blessing. If you're not prepared, the door's going to stay locked. See, he says keep on knocking, right? But what if you do this, but you're not prepared? What if you do that and you're not prepared? Is the door going to open? No, because see, the key was in the transformation that you should have already done, in the preparation that you should have already been doing. That's the key that unlocks it. But if you didn't do that, there's somebody else who took heed to that word. You know, when that hater came up to him, you need to work on your attitude. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Yeah. You got a terrible attitude. You need to work on how you talk to people. Mm -hmm. you, you need to work on, on, on this, that, and the other. Whatever it is you need to work on. But because it came from the wrong source, you chose not to do that. But God was trying to tell you, when I elevate you, Yeah, yeah. You gotta be in a rightful place. You gotta be in a humble place. So I'm, I'm, I sent somebody specifically to tell you to get in order because the blessing is on the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta have this thing right by the time you get there. You're walking towards it, but you're not ready. See, 
because there may be somebody else somewhere on the other side of the world. Yeah. They got that same word from their head. Mm -hmm. But the difference between them and you was pride versus humility. Mm -hmm. I don't appreciate you telling me about myself, but you might be a better friend than I thought because you're willing to do it. Mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. yeah. How do we define friends nowadays? Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. The yeah. person that pats you on the back or the one that kicks you in the butt? <laughs> See, my enemy might be the one in my old mindset. My enemy was the one that would tell me about myself. I don't like your attitude. You don't know how to talk to people. Blah, blah, blah. You need to change. You need to change. Let me get away from this person right here. Mm -hmm. Ain't got time to deal with people like that. But then the ones that's always pat me in the back. Hey, man, now you good, man. You got to change, man. You all right. You all right. I used to call them my friends. Mm -hmm. But I'm walking around here all jacked up. Yeah. 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 But see, now I'm looking at it in a different perspective because I'm being transformed by the renewal of my mind. See, if you love me, I don't care how you say it, you better tell me the truth. Amen. Amen. That's it. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if I don't change, my blessing is delayed. Right, right, right. And if you're my friend and you're not telling me about myself, I'm blaming you. <laughs> Can I be real with you for a minute? If you're my friend and you're not telling me about myself, I'm blaming you for me not getting my blessing. Because if you tell me what I need to hear and I work on me, that speeds up the process of me getting what I need and you get blessed too. So if you want to blame somebody for something, blame them for that. I blame you for not telling me about myself and my erroneous ways. You the one that I do. Don't want this your fault, we ain't blessed. <laughs> Come on, somebody. That's what a true friend is like. That's what a true friend does. I have no problem hurting your feelings for your good for your good. Because I want to see you blessed so bad that I'm going to tell you you're ugly. Can I tell you you're ugly? Yeah. Not you ugly. Yeah. Your ugly. Okay, I want to tell you about your ugly. Yo, this is your ugly. Boom, 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 boom. You need to work on all this. Come on, these are all your handicaps. This is what's keeping you from being able to get to your blessing. You get mad all you want to, but if you change these things, just go ahead and thank God later. God is His mercies are made new. How often? Every, every morning. So every morning. So when we wake up, we got a fresh slate. We get a fresh slate every single morning when we wake up. We have an opportunity to get it right. Amen. So I want to encourage y'all today. Yeah. Take a look in the mirror. Because we all have a blessing waiting on us. God, what's slowing me down? What's stopping me from getting? Is there anything that's hindering me from receiving? Because I want to prepare for this blessing. I want to prepare for this promise. Is there anything that's hindering you? And whatever he shows you, he may send somebody that you don't like mm -hmm. to tell you the truth about yourself. Mm -hmm. Forget the package. The Receive the message. Come on. The spouse. Oh, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Quite oh, outside. Got it, don't <laughs> We both need to hear that one. Me, too. I, I got to be honest. I need to know. Because sometimes I will tell my wife something she don't want to hear because it came from me. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Minister, right, right. Minister So So come along and give a prophetic word with the exact same thing I said in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. It might be good she y'all sorry. I might as well get it. <laughs> but you know what? I do the same thing. She'll tell me the same exact thing. I'll be talking to my brother, like, man, you can do this where we have. I'm like, yes, yeah, a good idea. Hey, babe, you know what the guys told me? Mm -hmm. She's like, <laughs> same thing I told you. Then I just, yeah, same thing I told you. Wait, you did? <laughs> I didn't hear you. I, I didn't hear yeah, yeah, you. I didn't hear you. You know. But, but God's blessings are delayed. They're not denied. Amen. They're delayed. How long is it going to be delayed? It's up to us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's up to us. Yeah. Because, see, his mercies are made new every single day. So I have another opportunity to receive my blessing, to get a step closer to my blessing. I have another opportunity. So every day when I wake up, I'm grateful. I'm grateful because I know the promise is still there. The opportunity is still there because I woke up. The rest is on me. The rest is on me. Anybody want to receive a blessing? Come on, if you want to receive your blessing, come on, give God some praise. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. He says, I will withhold no good thing from you. No good thing. He says, nothing. I don't care how many of them it is, I'm not going to withhold any of them. 
If I made you a thousand promises, you get a thousand blessings. I'm not going to withhold any good thing from you. Now, how many of them you receive? That's on you. I want my thousand. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. God is good. Well, this is what I want to do. I want to give us the opportunity. If you have, again, because I believe God is here. I believe he is here. If there's something that you lost hope in, is there something that you, you sat down because you, you felt like it was not his will, but the reality is you recognize it now because you didn't prepare for it. Let's revisit that thing. Let's put it back on the table. Because it ain't over. It may be delayed, but it's not denied. Let's put it back on the table because God is saying today, I'm in the business of restoration. I'm in the business of blessing. I, I'm, a man of, I'm a man of my word. If I showed you the dream, it's going to come to pass, but I need you to work with me. That's what he's saying. I need you to work with me. you got to get to something. Where's your faith today? Where's your faith today? All eyes closed. Lord, we thank you for being here today. Yes. Lord, we thank you for being a prayer answering God. We thank you for being faithful. Hallelujah. Lord, there are so many things that you've promised us, so many things that you have shown us that we wrote it off as if we were uncertain if it was your will. We repent right now in the name of Jesus, forever doubting, Lord, that you would not come through on something that you've shown us, Lord, because you are faithful. I pray, Father, that you would help us to be transformed by the renewing of our minds and recognize, Lord, that the only thing that's separating us from the blessing you promised us is us. The person closest to us is holding us back from our own destiny. Lord, help us to recognize that and give us the courage to look ourselves in the mirror and say, all these years, it was my fault. Give us the courage to look ourselves in the mirror and say that, Father, and restore us. Bless us. Restore us and give us the faith to press towards the mark. Hallelujah. If there's anyone in this place today that recognizes their need for a God like the God that we serve, but you have not given your life to the Lord, has not confessed Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that's step one. Oh, yeah. While all eyes are closed, raise your hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. If there's anyone here that has lost hope, if there's anyone here whose faith has been diminished because you thought that God has forgotten about you, you thought that God preferred to bless the other person over you, hallelujah. While all eyes are closed, raise your hand. God wants to restore your faith today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray that you bring back to memory the very promises that you made to each one of us. The ones that we gave them, the ones that have not yet come to pass, Lord. And then I pray that you would show us the steps that we need to take to receive it so that the enemy cannot slow us or, de or deceive us any longer. Let this word go forward, Lord. Let it resonate in our hearts. Let it transform our mindset, our thought processes, Lord, our actions. And that's my prayer for everyone in here. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Give God some praise. Amen. Amen.